So as we said, the process of writing a project manual starts early on in the project overall. So maybe during schematic design, we might start with an outline and then design development, we're filling in information about the specific material choices that we uh, have started to kind of you know hone in on. And then by the time we get to the CD sets, the construction documents and contract document sets, uh, we're filling in that information. And by the time we get towards the end of that, and we're ready to go to bid, well now we have to do a final edit and we're kind of going through that whole process uh, and we're getting every last little bit down. So a lot of people will often just sort of wait, 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 and then write the whole thing at the end. And that's always a problem because it just takes so long to produce one of these things. Uh, but if you're sort of building it up through the process, well, then the information is likely to be fuller and be more sort of thorough and to have a sort of logical relationship between the drawing sets and the project manual. It's easier to tag information back and forth if you've been building it along. It's a lot harder if you're just going to, at the last second, throw a bunch of tags uh, onto the drawing sets and hope for the best. But obviously, in the same way that the drawings do, there's going to be issues that are going to change as it goes along. So if it's in-house changes, if you've been moving through it in-house, you may want to have your own system for how you keep track of those changes. Maybe some way that you're going to be making sure that uh, when we make a change over here, that we make a change in the project manual. And that would be by keeping some sort of log system. Uh, so that would be the project manager or the project architects. One of those players would be sort of keeping track of what the issues are and then making sure it shows up in the drawings and making sure that that new change shows up in the project manual. So that's during that whole sort of design process. As you're going along, you're trying to keep up between the two. And the only way you can really do that is by keeping a running log of what all the issues are that have come up over the, uh, over the time of that process. But then we get to this certain point where the project manual becomes actually a legal document. Prior to the bid phase, uh, the project manual is just a sort of useful tool that you're putting together and it's sort of in-house. You're not really using it in any sort of legal construct before that point. But when it becomes part of the bid package, it's now part of the legal sort of package of information about a project. So as soon as you start making uh, addenda where there's a sort of conversation between the architects and these potential bidders and they're asking questions and you're uh, writing all those questions down and coming up with answers and altering the uh, drawings and responding to the information that's been requested uh, from these bidders well, you have to make sure that you're also changing the project manual as well, because typically both the drawings and the project manual would have to be altered in order to answer all of the questions that come up for an addenda. And just like with a drawing set, if I have a drawing and that sheet of, on the drawings has one change on it, and you have a whole big plan with all kinds of stuff going on, on it and there's lots of notes and there's tags of information and things are pointing in at different places and the change is right there, it's really hard to see that. It's just like it's just lost in the information. It's, this sheet is filled with dimensions and notes and lines and all kinds of stuff going on. So that idea of the bubble, the revision cloud bubble, uh, that you go around. When I look at that sheet now, it's like, wow, that's clearly where the, where the change is. I can see it immediately. Well, so on the project manual, you do the same thing. You actually can put a revision cloud around the area that's been changed. But it's not going to work as well as it does with the drawing sets. With a drawing set, I have this big drawing, I open it up, it has a lot of information on it, and the revision cloud sort of jumps forward. You can visually, sort of graphically see it very easily. But I have a project manual, it's an eight and a half by 11 book, it's probably pretty thick. It's hard to actually find those moments. You'd have to literally look at every single page in order to find that, which isn't such a terrible thing to do. Even on a big, thick set of drawings, you know, maybe I have a hundred pages. Well, that's believable that you could kind of see those pretty easily. But in a project manual, it'd be very hard to track that down. Now, it's still useful to put something like a revision cloud or an underline or some other sort of tool uh, that sort of says something's happened here and this is now a different situation. And often these days, if you're doing it in certain kinds of uh, uh, formats, uh, there'll be ways that you can highlight and ways that you can 
uh, cross out and underline that are sort of built into the programs that you're using uh, so that that is all sort of part of the process and it's easy to see, but still it'd be hard to find in the project manual. So usually you have to find other ways to note where those changes are. So one thing you might find is uh, when you produce an addenda that you would note in the addenda where the change is, so what sheet number uh, or what section number uh, that change was. You would tag the addenda to the change in the project manual. And then once they can flip to that page, there would be the spot where it's underlined or the revision cloud or whatever highlighted or made bold or whatever it is. It would then jump out on that sheet or in that section what areas uh, had been altered. So it's a way to take the addenda and use that as a tool for helping people find the information uh, that's been altered. You might also tag it to what's been changed on the drawing sheets. Uh, you'd have the sheet numbers, the drawing numbers, that kind of thing uh, listed onto the addenda if there was a change. And that would be a useful thing. It's just not as important as doing it in the project manual because as I said, it's just so hard to find uh, any change that happens in a project manual. Uh, another way that you'll often see this done is that uh, project manuals like drawing sets are always dated. Uh, they must have a date on them in order for them to have any legal consequence. So when you do a bid set, it says bid set October 10th, you know, whatever the year is, right? You're going to have that information right there on each of those drawings. And that way when it goes into the bid set uh, documents, the bid set documents will say this bid set is uh, using this drawing set or in this project manual. And the way that we describe that is by giving it the name of the project with the date. Uh, and then the contract, when the bidder is chosen, uh, the contract's going to say, all right, here's the project, this is the project we're doing, and we're using the drawings dated X, right? So everything has to be dated. And one of the ways that you can help people navigate through a project manual is to have a special date uh, on the table of contents that says alterations and then the date. So it would be revision one, addenda one, or change order two, or something like that. You would just literally title it out and put a date, and then you would do the revision cloud on that section. So you would be clear that there's a date, that means something has changed, that section has been highlighted, and then you can go into the project manual and find that specific piece of information. And then from there, again, it would be highlighted or underlined or whatever system you were using. So those are all ways of using the documents themselves, the addendas, the project manual, uh, that you're actually altering them in such a way that people can find the changes, the revisions that have happened along the way. But of course, you can also do uh, other kinds of documents, kind of separate memos, uh, you can do bulletins, you can do, there's all sorts of other ways that you can highlight the idea that something has changed. And again, you would then be giving the specific section number uh, and finding other ways to sort of get across uh, how people could find that information. So typically in that scenario, if I'm doing a memo on this topic, I would probably include in the memo what the change was, what it was before and what it became uh, in the memo. And then I would include a link or a tag or some way to show people what section that was so they could also see it in the context of the project manual. And again, it's really important that these things are all dated and that there's a log being kept of these kinds of changes because the legal construct is really all about the dating. Uh, you can't really be talking about uh, any of these different issues, a change that was made or uh, what the drawings look like or how clear something is. It's all dependent on what drawing set or what project manual uh, somebody's looking at. So what date it is is hugely important. What date the memo was is hugely important. So you can kind of fit all of these things uh, together. If you did have a memo that went in that was altering that project manual, uh, it really should go in to the project manual as well. So that would be something where if you were flipping through, you would be able to see that information. So you're looking for ways not only to keep it up to date, so a system for keeping it up to date, keeping a log of changes, keeping a log of the sort of process as it goes along, but then also using the questions during addenda periods and bidding periods uh, to sort of make sure that when you're updating the drawings, you're also updating the project manual. So you're trying to keep it as up to date as possible, but you're also trying to make it possible for somebody to navigate through that system and find those revisions.